Hey, this is Jesse Canton. Man, I am so glad that you took the time to download this podcast. Listen, it's getting ready to be a blessing to you. It is power packed full of wisdom. Listen, as you hear this episode and you maybe you want to be a blessing to this podcast, well, you can hit me up on Cash App. Type in Jesse E. Canty, J-S-S-E, the letter E, C-A-N-T-Y, with the dollar sign, of course. And you can be a blessing. Anything you give will be appreciated. I thank you, and I pray that nothing but God's blessings and his best be upon you. Take care. Hey, this is Jesse Cantor with another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? Listen, I want to talk to the people whose faith is frustrated, even in this new year, already. Because it seems like your life is not lining up with what your prayers or what you believe that your destiny should be. I mean, you want to go right, but it seems like everything is already taking a left turn. Well, can I tell you, maybe God got you right where he wants you, even though your feelings are telling you you're tripping and you're in the opposite place. Well, listen, I'm going to talk about this episode. I'm going to title this one. Trust the process. Let's talk about it. Yeah, man. Man of wisdom. To the podcast, from the pulpit, to the podcast, from the pulpit, to the podcast, to the podcast, yeah. Jesse Canty, pursuing my destiny, pursuing my destiny, yeah. Tell me, how bad do you want it? Man, I want it real bad. How about you? Listen, thank you for tuning in to this new, uh, new episode uh, my podcast, I got something to say, man. So let's go ahead and get into this thing and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity, God, to come back into the studio and do your will again. For the work that you have given me in this assignment is such uh, so important and meant for such a time as this. Let it now uh, manifest. Let it now encourage somebody in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Well, man, again, this episode is Trust the Process. Thank you for tuning in. And man, listen, this one right here is a doozy because a lot of times I do what Bishop Jakes taught me years ago. He says, before you try to cook for somebody else, he says, well, or try to feed somebody else, you need to eat it yourself and taste it and eat it yourself. So a lot of times I, before the episodes, I look deep within and I speak to myself. And if it feeds me, then I feed it to you. Well, this is one right here, because I look at things where I got where I'm believing and I'm knowing my faith is sure, but I don't care who you are. You can start off with strong faith. And if life throws some lemons at you or some unexpected terms at you that you did not expect to happen, or maybe you don't even know what's going on, your faith eventually is going to begin to swerve or wane a little bit. Well, that's human. That's understandable. But that's why you need an encouraging voice. You need something to remind you that, number one, God has not forgotten about you. He Number two, he has not changed his mind about you. And number three, you are not lost. When you think you're lost, think about it. When we're driving, and I'm going to use this illustration again in a minute. When we're driving in our vehicle and we're going somewhere and all of a sudden when we see things that we believe we're heading the right way, oh, we feel comfortable. We're enjoying the ride. But there are times when you are uh, 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 en route somewhere, you're en route somewhere and the route you're taking, it doesn't seem like the place that you desire to go. And guess what happens? We start to panic. We start to sweat. We start to get nervous. And what? guess what else happened? We start to question uh, the navigation, whether it's a map or whether it's the uh, uh, the navigation that's telling us what way to go, the routes. We start to question the one that's giving us instructions. We start to question ourselves. And then it leads to you starting to slow down your momentum. You pull over and you think about turning the wrong way or back where you came from. Well, that happens again with our destiny. There are people who are listening to me. You have experienced that same uh, process uh, of discouragement. Like you, have, you experienced that same discouragement that came in your life when it contained or when it came down to you pursuing your destiny. 
things did not line up like you thought they was going to line up quickly. So it made you start questioning where you on the right track and sometimes even turning around and going back the opposite way where we came from. Well, that's where that phrase come from. We sometimes we have to trust the process because God prophesied or promised you uh, that you are going to have a baby. It doesn't mean you're not going to endure pain. I was one lady in the Bible that was pregnant and the angel had prophesied great things to her. And she said, if I am, and I'm paraphrasing, if I am blessed, like you said, I am, then why am I in so much pain? And then the angel uh, responded to her. You are in this immense pain, intense pain, because you are pregnant, not just pregnant, but you're pregnant with two nations inside of you. In other words, you thought you were just carrying one purpose, but really you was carrying not only two, but you was carrying the purpose of many others. See, that's how it is. Sometimes you think you think it's all about you. Well, let me tell you, it's never all about you. What you are experiencing right now is not just for your good. You are serving the God that controls the universe and the world. I mean, he can, he, you talk about multitasking. <laughs> he, 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 he even tells us like this. He said, I can work all things. I'm paraphrasing. I can work all things together for the good of them who are called according to the purpose, his purpose. God knows how to bring everything together in your life for your good. Though one is, uh, issue or one circumstance that you are going to, you're zeroed in. That alone does not feel good, but it's working for your good. The great old illustration is if you're baking a cake. You cannot take a spoonful of flour, put it in your mouth and say, man, since I'm baking a delicious cake and I know the outcome is going to be powerful and going to be tasty, then let me just stop and take this one ingredient and let me just chug down the one ingredient. It's going to be nasty. Swallowing raw eggs is going to be nasty. Drinking all is going to be nasty. But when you put those things together and stir them up together, it will come out into a tasteful delicacy that will blow your mind. What I'm trying to tell you, what you are experiencing now, all you're doing is you're zeroing in on where you're at right now. I mean, to you, that thing that you prayed about already today, that thing that's been on your mind and been troubling you, that's, that's the end all be all for you right now. But I'm telling you, God knows your end from your beginning. That means he doesn't just think about your Tuesday. He don't just think about your January 2023. He thinks about your entire life. He knew your thoughts before your grandparents were even created. God is the ultimate one who plans your life. He got you what I'm trying to tell you. So in this context, when your faith is built up in God and not something that's just out there other than uh, uh, growing, going back to God, you know, because a lot of people trust in all kind of other things. I am talking about trusting in the creator. And when you are looking unto God, who is the author and the finisher, that means he is the originator and he's one that's going to complete your faith. You can trust the process. What does it mean, Jesse, to trust the process? Basically, mean it means with the one of the definitions is carrying out a long term task or goal with the end uh end with a nice outcome. You expect it to end with a, with a nice outcome, but you are experiencing some hiccups or some mistakes. But you gotta still believe that the outcome is gonna turn out all right. That means that everything right, right now may look bad. It may feel bad, but don't let it cause you to give up. Don't let it discourage you to where it distract you and, 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 and thwart your whole momentum. <sighs> in many things in life that, that man, I'm telling you, 
We are, you and I are on track and we're right where we need to be. The Bible says something that most people do not shout about. Most people does not quote. It says sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let me bust your bubble right now. That means every day have already been allotted a, a certain amount of adversity uh, that's going to approach you. But God is already in his omniscience, all knowing, omnipotent, all powerful uh, character. He's already given you and I enough grace to deal with it. Somebody need to look themselves in the mirror or just speak to yourself right now that you have the power to deal with it. It don't make no difference what you got on the plate, your plate. It don't make no difference what about ready to broke you, break you down. And that is getting heavy. Listen, don't listen to that voice that's trying to discourage you and telling you to throw your hands in the air and give up like you just don't care. No, you have the grace that's been given by God to deal with it. It's, you ain't got to run to heaven. Now, yes, run to God in prayer, but don't run to heaven like you're a news reporter, like you breaking the news to God that he didn't see coming. Even unexpected deaths, he saw it. And he allowed you to wake up that morning. That means you have the power to deal with it through God. So technically, what does it mean to trust the process? It means that while things are not exactly as you imagine them to be, you still got to trust, have faith that you're working your way to getting to where you want to be. You are on track. God never promised that everything was going to be perfect by the time you get to your destiny. Destination. He never promised that. Everybody you started with doesn't mean you're going to finish with them. Everybody you were close to doesn't mean you're going to remain close to them. You're going to outgrow some relationships. You're going to outgrow. God going to push you out of some places. He's going to lead you into some places. He's going to change you. I said this before, as I quote the great Jim Rome, he says, Do everybody think having a million dollars or becoming a millionaire is the greatest thing in the world? He said, but that's not true. He said, the greatest thing about becoming a millionaire is who you have become by the time you are a millionaire. That means the process have changed you. That's why I'm not an advocate of scratch off tickets and just getting rich in an instance. Because it robs you of, oh, listen to this. When you try to go from rags to riches or from failure to success, just like that, it robs you of the process of development. And that's, if you got wisdom, that should be one of the greatest things that you ask God to give you the grace to do. Lord, help me to have the grace for you to develop me fully. Mature me. I speak even to myself I'm, always, I'm talking to you. I'm not there yet. Some days I'm doing pretty good. Some days I'm struggling. But I trust the process. I'm asking God, though I may, though it may seem like I am in a tough place where, where what I'm believing, where I'm trying to go is not in the view, <clears throat> but I don't need to rush myself. I don't need to pressure myself. I just need to calm down. I need to renew my patience and my trust in God. And I have to trust the process. Even if things may look bad, in the current path that I'm in, it is still not your or my final destination. You passing through a place in your life. I think this is one of the most tragic things about suicide that people have given up and they checked out of a place that was never meant to be the ultimate destination. You was passing through. Yay. Though I 
pass through the valley of shadow of death. Help me, God, not to give up. Now, don't help me. Help me, God, not to quit in a place that I was never meant to stay at. Help me not to build a house where I was supposed to re- erect an overnight tent, a one night tent, a temporary dwelling place, a temporary job you have, a temporary place you live in that. And you already said my life is terrible. You are, you are not building a house. You have not reached your ultimate destination and you can't give up now. You got to keep pursuing, keep allowing life to throw things at you. Keep allowing God to develop you into the person. He is using these adversity moments or adverse moments. He is using these things to cook you, to bake you slash mature you and to make you. You are the cake that he's placed in the oven and you are experiencing a heated situation You are surrounded around a furnace of affliction, but through the heat that is hitting you from all sides is causing something to activate within you that will cause you to develop from the inside out that will make you rise and be able to stand higher than what you went into it. The way you went into it. Trust the process. God is not through with you. I'm going to give you 10 reasons why it's important that you trust the process. Number one, by trusting the process, there's number one reason. One of the, uh, the first reason I'm going to give you why you should trust the process. It makes you, you calmer, calmer, C-A-L-M-E-R. It's only natural that you have more inner peace when you let go of the need of trying to control every outcome in your life to the people who are struggling like me and got a little touch of a perfectionist in them. I like it a little bit, but sometimes it gets on my nerve because it makes me, I'm trying to control everything and God is not going to allow you to control everything in your life. Even if you try to control it, it won't never, never completely be controlled. <laughs> but trust in the process is the key that will call you to be more calmer. I have to tell my wife, I said, you know, what? it's a wonderful thing when you can talk to your loved one and say, you know what? And they know you too. Two years ago, man, that freaked me out. But you know, baby, what's, well, baby I'm starting to have a little bit more peace. You know, this child did not do this right here. This right here did happen. Ah, man, I'm not going to rule my day over it. What it's doing when you trust in the process is teaching you how to be more calmer. All of these steps is making you more matured and ready to receive or to end up in the place where you're ultimately trying to go. Again, it's not about be, be, having it, becoming a millionaire. It's the journey of who you will become by the time you are a millionaire. You should be a totally different person. You should be a more mature person that's now you're ripe and you're ready to handle the place of your ultimate destination. Number two, number one, it makes you more calmer. I like to. Two, it makes you more confident. You learn to build trust and rely on yourself and your God. When you start trusting the process, when you start, when you lost your job and yes, it's hurt. It hurts. You are not a machine. You will cry. You will bleed. You will get cut. You will get hurt, but that's okay. Don't let it cause you to give up. Don't let it cause you to quit pursuing your destiny. It will make you more confident when you know you worked hard to get where you currently are. Then you will have the confidence that you will also get where you want to go. I have lived long. I tell my wife this too. When we go through something, I says, babe, we have seen worse times than this. Whether it's financial, whether it's uh, relational, 
when I tell her we have seen worse times than this, and when she come back saying, babe, you right, it makes me look back at what I'm dealing with and say, this ain't nothing. And what is it doing? It's building up my confidence. Have confidence in God, but also have confidence in God, the God that is uh, uh, alive and that's strong and that's real inside of you. See, that's what makes me right there praise him. Not just because he created the heaven, the moons, and the stars, and he's powerful, all powerful, but because he lives in me. You mean to tell me I got part of that in me and he tells me that I'm made in his likeness? It makes me more confident. I ain't walking by myself. I got some things I'm tore up from the floor, but don't throw me out of here. Don't toss me away because there's something that God sees in me that made me, made him choose me. It makes you more calm. It makes you more confident. Number three, it makes you less likely to hurt yourself, not just physically, but even hurt yourself by your present choices. It should slow you down and say, wait a minute. I quit. I walk out of this job. If you trust the process, you need to calm down and say, wait a minute. I can throw a delay that was never even destined to be in my, my journey. You was called to get on that highway and travel and go where you need to go. Trust the process and knock down those miles one at a time. But because you got impatient, you messed around and ventured off course, ran over a nail. Now you got to go change two tires and it's going to delay you by 10, 10 hours. All that right there is because you hurt yourself because you didn't trust the process. We can bring, now listen, I don't know about you, but that should make you sting a little bit because we can hurt ourselves in manners, man, when it comes down to our destiny. And nobody want to talk about that. We only want to just blame God for everything. When you don't trust the process. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. God has blessed us to have listeners all around the world. And I thought to myself, I said, maybe there's somebody that wants you to have a prayer request. I want you to pray with them concerning anything, your family or whatever it is. If that's be so, listen, drop me an email at Jesse Canty podcast at Yahoo dot com. J-S-S-E-C-A-N-T-Y podcast at Yahoo dot com. I would love to hear from you. I love to pray with you. And I want you to have a blessed day. It's so easy to break your own heart when you stress over your own life. Mess your own journey up. When you trust the process, it means that you value yourself. You're enough to stop stressing yourself self out. That man that was possessed with them demons, he was cutting himself. He's hurting him on his own self, beating your own self up because things are not perfect right now. You're not perfect, but God knew that when he chose you. Quit hurting yourself. Number four, when you trust the process, it makes you become more patient. It makes you become more patient. Just like I, tr- I mentioned earlier about trust in the process, it, it t- you know, makes you calmer. It takes a great deal of patience, especially if you plan to do things right. Build your character. It builds your attitude when you trust the process of things and just let it go. Let some things go that doesn't matter. And you believe that everything will eventually work itself out. <clears throat> You, it also makes you, and I'm still on number four, but it also makes you build discipline. Patience is everything. Patience will cause you to have more discipline and cause you to wait. Ride that wave out, man. Quit letting that wave destroy you. Number five, it, this is my favorite too. It makes you become more resilient. Resilient, a quick definition of the word resilient, it means you're strong, but you're flexible. Technically, it's a person that's able to withstand uh, or recover something quickly, recover quickly from your difficult conditions. You've been bent out of shape, but you snap back. Because you can trust the process. It makes you become resilient. No matter what challenges life is throwing at you right now. Resilience is something you gain by trusting the process. And that resilience becomes part of your character. As you have no need to control or fix everything obsessively. Because you are trusting 
the process that God has you at. It's going to work. That divorce somehow is going to build character. It's going to work for your good. Number six, it makes you become more open to change. That's where I mean you're flexible. You're strong, but you're not rigid. Some people have got strong faith, but they need to have flexible faith. That means you're open to change. It may not come like you want him to come, but you're able to adjust it and recognize how he did come another way. The snow you may be expecting may come in the form of rain, but you got to be able to change and be open to change. Nobody likes the idea of change. It's one thing in all of our lives that we can't avoid entirely. Change is consistent no matter where you go. I mean, you got you can trust the process, but it's still you're going to experience some change. And you got to be comfortable with that change. You have to be able to learn to adapt to the changes that may happen in your life, but still trust the process. Number seven, it will lead you to your purpose. When you trust the process, it's all about being led to your life purpose. Everyone is made for a purpose. And this is why it's important to have faith and just trust that you will get to where you're supposed to be. God will point you in the right direction. You know, they say what is meant for you will eventually find its way to you. I believe that. But I'm not saying just do what you want to do and throw your hands in the air and just drive uh, without even putting your hands on the wheel. Don't you know how silly that is? I'm not saying when you say trust the process, because some people I hear say this all the time. It says that just, just, just live life. Everything's supposed to happen. It's going to happen. I'm not going to the stream with that because now you're trying to negate the fact that life comes with a responsibility and accountability for your decisions. You don't get in the car and throw your hands in the air and put your foot on the gas and say, wherever I'm supposed to end up, God going to take me. No, you got to make that right turn. You got to make the right decisions. You have to learn to keep it in the road. You have to learn to stay on your, stay focused and get to where you want to go. And when you venture off the side of the road, don't blame God. Blame you not for following the instructions. Number seven, I mean, seven was it lead your purpose. Number eight, it helps you practice gratitude. When you let go, you learn to be grateful for what you already have. And then you start taking life from there on out. You learn contentment. Even if you're not where you want to be, I'm grateful to what I have. Number nine, you grow through everything when you can trust the process. Did you hear that one? That's another favorite of mine. You grow through everything. Watch this. I'm going to say it in a nice way. You mean to tell me even the crap that came into my life and hurt me and that I had to deal with crap? You mean to tell me that crap can actually become my fertilizer? Yeah. I don't know if I ever told that story where I had the challenge. I thought I bought a new house. We had a backyard full of red dirt. And I did everything I could. And all of a sudden, I came across an old man. And he told me what to do. And I, I threw different, I had different steps and procedures. But I went and bought 10 bags of manure, 10 bags of cow dung. Put me some gloves on, stuff for stinking up the whole neighborhood. People complaining. But in due process of time, I trusted the process and green grass came. You mean to tell me some nasty, stinking stuff that I had to go through that was embarrassing and that was pointing me out and I'm being a laughing stock? You mean to tell me it actually became a fertilizer? No matter what things you encounter in life, you can grow through them, even the most painful circumstances, if you trust the process. And number 10, you also realize that timing is everything. Trust God's timing. You got to just believe in that. You got to believe that you're right where he wants you to be. Mandy Hale says, trust the weight. Embrace the uncertainty. Enjoy the beauty of becoming. When nothing is certain, Everything is possible. Tony Gaskin says, trust the process. Your time is coming. Just do the work and the results will handle themselves. And man, I hate to do it, but I'm going to quote Drake. Drake says, sometimes it's the journey that teaches you a lot about your destiny or your destination. 
man, I'm telling you, God is trying to tell you, chill, relax. I got you. Stay on course, course. Take, make the right decisions. And I'm going to get you to where I said you was going to go. Father, I pray right now, God, that this empower to just strengthen someone, Father, and that it be the fertilizer that they need to grow. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, business owners, this is Rashad Brown with Swipe Fast, located in Columbia, South Carolina. We are excited to be partnering with Jesse E. Canty in the How Bad Do You Want It podcast. Since 2017, Swipe Fast has been helping business owners like you save up to 99% in their debit and credit card processing fees. So if you process business to business or business to consumer payments, we have solutions that will meet your needs and would love to hear from you. You can reach us at swipefast.com forward slash save. That's swipe, spelled with the Y, or contact us at 1-800-597-0713. Don't forget to let us know that Jesse E. Canty sent you. Have a blessed day.